it's the chatterbox. We're having a good time here, as usual, when I get this this cast of characters together in a room around microphones. What was what was the what, what were we a the law firm of? We are Mancuso, Margo Mason, and Sword. Limited. And there you Very go. And, and now the introductions are out of the way. I'm like sort of Known as the food police. <laughs> <laughs> this is about healthy eating, and now you can see what all those nuts and berries do. They make nuts out of all of us. Um, anyways, here. anyways. Uh, so you're with us. <laughs> This is going to be fun. Uh, Tears of Mason joins me as always. How are you doing, Tears I'm great. <laughs> Julie Margo, our Reiki expert. Reiki. 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 I'll get this one of these days. It's Reiki, Reiki, Reiki. Reiki, Just, Reiki, Reiki, Reiki. Just smack me every time. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to be doing a show on Reiki in the near future, and I'll say it so many times I won't screw it up. There you go. Thank uh, you. And we're going to give him a Reiki treatment beforehand, so he'll really be mellow. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Mary Angela Mancuso. Yes. All right. <laughs> right Our yoga topic. master. Yoga master. Yoga therapist. Are you involved in the Zumba? I got the message. Are well, uh, I am involved in organizing it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you're the orchestrator of the Zumba, not the master of the yes. Zumba ceremonies. Yes. I'm a participant. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm organizer. Fantastic. So we are here today to talk about healthy eating and. Yes, food. Food in general, I suppose. Food, healthy but, um, eating, and, and we'll and probably veer off into the modern food supply and why it's making it so hard for us to eat in a healthy way. Yeah. Um, and just all of those good stuff. Um, and I'm excited about this because, frankly, um, every other day in the newspaper, the TV, the other media that we're surrounded by, we get some new study that's telling us that what we thought was good for us is not good for us. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I wonder how in the world anybody is supposed to sort through all this stuff and figure out what they're supposed to do. Well, you have to know what your reliable sources are, um, and a lot of those studies that refute um, the value of vitamins are mm-hmm. really not well done studies. Mm-hmm. I wondered about that. This yeah. came out They're recently. Really not well done not studies good. at all. What makes them not well done? The science is bad. Mm-hmm. The science is just plain bad. It, they um, skew them to get a result that they particularly want, mm-hmm. and then they. Um, will only give out the information they choose, all from a study also. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's not, not good science. Joining us is our friend Jude Goldstein, our new uh, member of the practice. And Goldstein. It's perfect. It's, it's Mancuso, Margo, Mason, Sorg, and Goldstein. There it is. Food police. <laughs> Limited, yes. This is perfect the, for me. Right? <laughs> yes. uh, I, I, at least she's another organic person in the room. I feel so good. <laughs> Please organic. explain to everybody uh, your, your, your expertise. <laughs> um, I am a body-centered therapist and a holistic declutterer. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> holistic declutterer? Yes. A holistic, as opposed to a partial declutterer? Well, yes, because when I go into people's homes... I'm not looking just to clean a shelf. I'm really okay. looking to see how are you going to feel good in your home and okay. taking in all parts of who you are. Okay. So that's why I've decided to use the word holistic, even though it is a, a jargony word. Yeah. I looked it up in the dictionary and I said, oh yeah, the whole person. This is, mm-hmm. this is what I do. Whole person, whole home. That's it. I like that. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Well, we were just, uh, before you stopped it, uh, speaking about the, uh, the studies we see on the news and everything and how vitamins in particular is a very bad study that, uh, that vitamins are bad for you. Uh, I think was, it was the, the, the gist of it. Do you have any thoughts on that? Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> how must declutter yes. the bad science? Yes. I think yeah. what, you know, without getting political about it, mm-hmm. um, every person, is different and every person's needs are different and we need to become advocates for ourselves for our own bodies so even though it would be really wonderful to have a doctor or a practitioner that we could go to that will take care of all of those things for us we need to be we need to read we need to be educated and we need to know what vitamins are about what supplements are about what good eating is about so that we can find what the balance is for ourselves. But that's the quandary. There is so much out there, and it's very hard for the average person to evaluate whether what they're reading is really good science, what they're reading really makes sense, or if it's just somebody's agenda 
packaged as a, a new method of losing weight or being healthy or whatever. And we've gone through the zone diet, you know, the Pritikin diet, the Sears diet, the this diet, the that diet. But the one thing mm-hmm. that all the diets have, I mean, there, there's no one diet for everybody. Mm-hmm. No, and it's not even right. a diet, it's a lifestyle of eating. Mm-hmm. There's no one way for everybody. But what is a way for everybody is like even throughout all of those diets, they're promoting whole foods, Mm -hmm. get rid of the package stuff, get rid of the garbage out of your diet, as I call it garbage, and toxins that you eat. That is standard through most of those diets, and and you can feel better on any of them. And um, (coughs) one of the common sayings at the clinic where I go um, for my care is that it doesn't matter what diet you're on. Eat, the, eat any kind of diet. Eat the caveman diet. Eat, you know, the Irish diet. Eat the Italian diet. It doesn't matter what diet you eat. Don't eat the standard American diet. That's mm. the worst thing that anybody. Let's talk about what the standard American diet is: white bread, packaged foods, chips, ice cream, cakes, cookies, pies, donuts, fast food. Yeah, you should talk food. about not eating white food. Basically, and you're yeah. describing white food. You're describing yeah. food that's so heavily processed doesn't even have any color anymore. Yeah. So like Michael Pollan, who who's yeah. a, a a food guy, and he talks about the, his food manifesto, and he says the 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 eaters uh, the eaters manifesto is is there's three things: uh, eat real food. Yes. Yeah. Real food being um, as close to the natural thing that it it was yeah. that you can get. Yeah. Well, uh, eat real ground, food. Yeah. Not much, uh-huh. okay, because we all eat too much. You know, we biggie everything, biggie size everything, and mostly plants. Yeah, and I would add one thing to that, organic. Organic, organic as much as you organic. can. Yeah. And the other thing I would add to that, as much raw as you can. Not everybody mm-hmm. needs to be totally raw because I'm mm-hmm. a raw vegan. Mm-hmm. I've been for quite some time. But not that's not a diet for everybody. Mm-hmm. Again, everybody is different in that respect. But as much raw as you can fit into your diet. And the average that I have come across from... Um, my clinic again. We promote like about um, seventy percent, at least seventy percent of your diet, seventy to eighty percent raw. So, what but, does that look like yeah. for people in terms of real, actual food choices? If we're gonna, oh, do, it's a variety. You know, so I'm mean, talking about salads, obviously. That comes to your mind. Well, that's what people think food. of, but that's kind of where you start, okay. and then you begin to branch off from that, really, um, because when you start turning into a whole food diet, yet. The hardest thing that you have to do is recondition your taste buds mm. because you're so used to artificial flavors and artificial mind Which excitement is salt when you and eat. sugar for the most part, right? Sugar, add flavorings. There's all sorts of additives that are put in food to make them very exciting for us to eat and go back and eat more. Oh, there's a there's an ingredient in food. I can't remember the name of it. It starts with a C, so now everybody checking all their ingredients now. But what I discovered, what it's made out of, ready for this? And this is in every packaged sweet thing, this ingredient. It's made out of the... The anal glands of a muskrat. Okay? <laughs> so when you eat that packaged cookie, yep. just picture that muskrat and how in the world they Carrot. got those anal glands from that yeah. muskrat is beyond me. But that's what this ingredient is made out of when we're eating that when we eat this Yeah, food. and that's just a mild one compared to some other yeah. things that, that are... Pretty good. disgusting, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so cookies are off the list. <laughs> <laughs> Not homemade cookies. You make homemade right. cookies. Cookies that's from right. scratch. Yeah. That's that, well, we I think that's, that's key to a lot of this is is really making your own food. Yeah. You know, buying as much whole food, real food as you yeah. can and preparing it yourself. Yeah. And making your own food is holistically yes. healthy for you. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to be, well, we can't go out into the fields and harvest it every day because many of us don't have that accessibility. I did that in my garden this and, year. And, 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 and every every garden in the United, every house in the United States should have a garden. Uh, apparently, saccharin. Very bad for you. Well, no, that's what that's the muskrat thing. Oh, saccharin. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's saccharin. Wow. That's with, with a C. It's pretty disgusting. Or, yeah. All creepy. Well, I knew it was poison, but I yeah. realized that. Yeah. Well, you know, look, look. Yeah. most of the ingredients you read on a package of something are words you can't even pronounce. Yeah. Why would you put something in your body you don't even know how to pronounce mm-hmm. it? That's right. Yeah. You know, that, that sounds like playing with, you know, like playing Russian roulette mm-hmm. with your health. Body doesn't wow. know but how to done it? Somebody brought into work the other day, not here, another place I work, a bunch of uh, packaged sweet things. And mm-hmm. I looked at one. Now, this this was a like a, a sweet roll. I looked at it. 510 calories. Right. Okay. 500 and... That's, like, that's, a, that's dinner. Okay. 510 right. calories for a snack. 
And there were two natural ingredients on it, sugar and flour, and everything else was unpronounceable. <laughs> right, yeah. And I'm sure it had some of that muskrat clan stuff. <laughs> yeah. right. and I'm sure the sugar and flour were <laughs> <laughs> processed. I'm sure the white life. sugar yeah. was the second yeah. ingredient, and white flour was the first ingredient. Right. Everything yeah. else was artificial. Yeah, was no I, I'm, still, I'm still tracking this down, this muskrat. <laughs> it's tasted in saccharin and sugar, but I'm still, I'm still looking for the word. <laughs> I wish I could remember the word because I, I just avoid it all now because I, I don't want to get yeah. anywhere. Like you think that. twice, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. But, but you basically just can't go wrong getting away from packaged things. Mm -hmm. You just basically can't go wrong for them. But let's talk about the reality of people who are working, you know, two jobs um, uh, who, yeah. who are trying to raise kids and, and their kids are involved in two or three yeah. activities in the evening and they're running and running and running and they don't have time to cook. What do they do? What kind of step can they take? One step that they can take that doesn't mean rearranging their entire life. Yeah, well, one to, thing to that, get I, that to people ask, ask me that, um, it, one of the easiest things to do is the most common things that you eat. Mm -hmm. The most common things that you eat, switch them to something better. And, and I'm thinking vegetables here at this mm -hmm. point, just to, to, as a point. If you um, have a favorite vegetable, just say maybe your favorite vegetable is tomatoes, you have it very often in your house, mm -hmm. switch it to an organic variety. Mm -hmm. So the things that you eat more often be begin to get put into a healthier category and mm -hmm. get it away from a packaged item. And then the things that you eat less, then that's not as big an impact in your in your in your world until you start moving into the the lesser items. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because people ask me about that because they say about cost and all that too. Mm -hmm. well, that's it's one of the easiest it ways to do the most common things that you put in your mouth, make it the most healthy things you can have, and then the things that are around that mm -hmm. then don't have as big an impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes some sense. And, and sure, organic food is more costly right now, but the more people buy organic food, the cheaper yeah. it gets. Because yeah, the but in the long run, it cheap. isn't. Because the other food deteriorates your it health, does. and we have that common thing: you either pay now or pay later. Well, not only that, but organic like that. food tends to be fresher yeah. and more uh, nutrition, and especially if it's local organic food. Right. Um, yeah. I've bought organic things at, say, East End Food Co-op, for example, and it's lasted in my refrigerator for a week or two yeah. while I've eaten it. When I bought stuff at other stores that's not organic, um, two days it's ruined. I have to throw mm -hmm. it out. I mm -hmm. Well, and it's likely been on a truck. It's been on a yeah. truck. It has. Yeah. It wasn't ripe when it was picked. You're right. also no, it's, supporting it's, small farmers exactly. and local that's very, and yeah. local, yeah. and that's yeah. very important as well. Yeah. There's a doctor, some of us know, Andrew Weil, uh, mm -hmm. MD, who's a, a big guru of, of, of healthy living. He's written another book, Spontaneous Healing, uh, Healthy of the infant or something in eight, eight weeks and amazing stuff. And he, what he says is to, that the thing to be really aware of if you're making changes in your diet and, you, and you're buying or purchasing vegetables and fruits and that, uh, is that if you have, if you're eating the entire thing, you're eating the peel, it should be organic. Yes. Okay. Yes. If you're peeling it, a banana or, or some an orange, you can get away with not an organic one. Okay. Unless, of course, um, this whole issue of pesticides that are now in the actual yeah. plant. But he says the two things you really have to avoid eating non-organic are celery and um, strawberries. Because and they apples. Uptake, there is some and apples they too. There's a list out there. They call it the Dirty really Dozen good. and the Clean yeah, Dozen at the yeah. EWG, Environmental Working Group. Okay. And um, they put out a list and they update it every year. And they give you the, the, the clean 12 and the dirty 12, the okay. things that you can, that, uh, you can buy mm -hmm. that might be conventional that are okay. And then the ones that you should work at having organic mm -hmm. in the and fruit. And how do people product. access that? That was EWG. EWG.com? Yeah. Um, yeah, I believe so. I okay. believe so. Yeah. But the other thing I want to add, which is taking off on what you were saying, is that um, everyone knows we're supposed to eat fruits and vegetables, but everyone eats, the general public eats a small amount. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Adding much more of that, mm -hmm. eating that before you begin your meal, yeah. eating that with a small piece of protein, whether mm -hmm. it's animal protein or vegetable protein, mm -hmm. more vegetables, mm -hmm. more yeah. fruit, yeah. more, 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 more yeah. fiber, right. because there isn't yeah. enough fiber yeah. in the fiber. diet. Yeah. So figure looking at your, at your lifestyle and saying, Oh, can I, can I eat another banana? Can mm -hmm. I eat another apple? Make mm -hmm. it easy. It doesn't have to be yeah. a fancy elaborate salad, no, but exactly. eat and that's, more of those. That's things. a point that I really like to stress because people say, Oh, you know, what do I do? Well, what's so hard about picking up an apple and eating it. Mm -hmm. It's even easier than unwrapping a candy bar. Right, you already, right. you know, swallowed <laughs> it by the time you got the wrapper off the candy bar. 
you know? EWG.org, it looks like. Okay. Probably this is what you're looking for, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. I also want to say my housemaid slices an apple every night and she sprinkles cinnamon on it, which mm-hmm. is an anti inflammatory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's And right. so it's delicious. Yeah. Put cinnamon in your oatmeal when you eat it. In the Sprinkle morning. it on your latte. Yep. It's great. Yeah. Cinnamon with everything. Um, yeah. Cinnamon's good for diabetes. Another thing that's good is dipping dipping apple slices in peanut butter is a great snack. Absolutely. You get your protein and you get your fiber Absolutely. and you get or a different nut butter, which is an even or even healthier than yeah. peanut butter. Yeah. Apple yeah. Exactly. butter. Yeah. Cashew and butter. Cashew butter. <laughs> we all know a lot. <laughs> yeah. but that's the thing. We know a lot. And yeah. and people do know a lot, but there's there's something that happens. There's a gap between knowledge and action. What do you think yeah, that's very all much, about? Yeah, very much so. Um I, that's been a question that we toss around a lot. How do you get people motivated to, to make a change? And I just think that there is not enough information about how easy it is to do that. Mm-hmm. How easy it is to mm-hmm. do that. And, and the media change. downplays that fact. And I really, yeah. and I really yeah. go more into a media fact, mm-hmm. factor there because we're so geared for what's being fed to us through the television, through the other medias, mm-hmm. uh, you know, with all the food ads and, and, mm-hmm. uh, pharmaceutical ads for that matter, as to where to take our attention for things. And it's not being promoted in the other faction that you can have these other items in your diet, like the Mm -hmm. fruits, the vegetables, the things that aren't in packages. Right, because we're not talking about someone who already shops at the East End Food Club. Exactly. Right. You're already, we're talking to <laughs> yeah. the choir here. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. The choir. But you know, so I don't, always, eat, I don't yeah. always eat the most healthy. I make poor food choices sometimes. Well, it, it, yeah, we're talking about the people, like, let's see, the poor, some of the people that we've uh, talked to on, on our show I produce uh, work with people that have to deal with food stamps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, exactly. they say, yeah, exactly. oh, yeah, you can eat organic on food stamps, and they'll laugh at you. Because mm-hmm. you can't, you absolutely can't, you can't because of the cost that it entails in that. And mm-hmm. them trying to, I mean, it's one thing them trying to grow, grow it on their own, but you know, these people are lucky they have homes at this point. They don't have a place to do that. Yeah. Um, but, and if they go to like, you know, my neighborhood, yeah, I can go to strip and go to right by nature. You know, food stamps are not going to cover mm-hmm. as much when I can go mm-hmm. down there. And I'm sorry, you know, in my neighborhood, <laughs> I'm in the checkout seeing them with their EBT card and, you know, getting Doritos, you know. Sure. Yeah. So. But I'm also interested in, Okay, so we're talking about the poor and we're talking about people who already eat organic. How about the mainstream population right. that have homes, that go to Giant <laughs> Eagle, yes. that spend money yeah. on groceries? Mm-hmm. They're the mainstream population. Yeah, they, they are huge. Yeah. They can be targeted. They can mm-hmm. be educated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They don't know. And you are seeing, and you are seeing a little bit of that. I know in, in Mount Lebanon, there's a few stores popping up in the gluten free movements mm-hmm. and everything. Mm-hmm. So it's become more like, especially gluten free, uh, in the restaurant, uh, the life phones, you know, that's one of those buzzwords that comes through the vegetarian, the vegan yeah. uh, lifestyles and you know are those uh, and as those become kind of buzzword kind of things you know people people get interested in uh, you know is that the first step to these becoming a real people are going to take these seriously and it'll be a broader thing I think it is yeah, what, what you have to do is go to your grocery go to your grocery store Mm-hmm. And, you know, Giant Eagle, for example, has a much better organic section than I ever had. When it first right. started coming yeah. out, they get some organic fruits and vegetables. And, technically and they, they were local. They left them sit you there know, for weeks. Mm-hmm. And right. they, they looked terrible. People didn't buy them. And people started complaining. I, I went to them and I said, you know, when are you going to get some decent organic fruits and vegetables? Because I'm not going to buy this garbage. It's, it, look at it. It's all wrinkled. It's been sitting here for a week. And so when people start saying that, say, this is what I want. Mm-hmm. They're going to sell that to you. They're going to get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you have to ask for it. You can't just go in and say, oh, it's not there, so I'll just pick but this But still, instead. you have to know what to ask for, and I think that all involves educating, mm-hmm. educating and educating, making things available for everybody mm-hmm. to have a chance to eat healthy in some manner. And education is really where, where the whole um, crux of the matter is. But we've got a food system in this country, a great yeah. agribusiness, that is mm-hmm. not about healthy eating. No, it's not. It blocks out healthy eating. And it's not about, it's not about healthy growing. It's, it's not, not about healthy growing. Healthy growing. It's, yeah. about it's about just, all of that. So these are, these are the, this is where the deep pockets are. And these deep pockets are sending lobbyists to Washington mm-hmm. and making sure that, you know, they're going to have an easy time of promoting their product and making sure it gets out there. And it's, it's mm-hmm. producing, even if we are talking about healthy, supposedly healthy stuff, they are going to do it the cheapest, most efficient, why we're yeah. going to make them on the most money in the long run. And I mean, you're always going to fight that. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're eating, well, I don't eat meat, well, sometimes I eat chicken, but we're, we're eating beef. I mean, I, I would eat beef again. Read, there she goes. Food, <laughs> Inc. 
<laughs> okay, what? Food Inc. If you if you read the, <laughs> the, 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 these books and you and you find out about what is actually happening mm -hmm. to the animals and, that we're eating, yeah. how they're being raised, oh, how they're being slaughtered, yeah. how they're being prepared for market, yeah. mm -hmm. you wouldn't go anywhere near that stuff again. Yeah. Yeah. Not and to mention really how much we could feed the people on the exactly. planet if we weren't feeding the animals to then feed the people. I also heard a statistic recently that 25 percent of the food produced in the in the world goes to waste. 25 mm -hmm. percent. That's enormous. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, we have billions of people starving mm -hmm. to death every year because they can't get food, and yet we're mm -hmm. throwing away or wasting somehow in the process of making. The food packaging, getting it where it's going, you know, preparing it, using it, and that twenty-five percent. And really, the goal really needs to be local growing everywhere in the world. Right. So right. Heifer International right. is an organization right. that really promotes local animals right. for local mm -hmm. people right. to to be able to sustain themselves. We don't need trucks going across mm -hmm. the country. Right. We don't yeah. need organic carrots. And in fact, Barbara Kingsolver wrote right. a book about eating Animal locally right. for one year mm -hmm. with her family. Mm -hmm. And they allowed themselves five foods every week mm -hmm. that they could buy out of, out right. of the region. Strawberries, chocolate, right. coffee. Yeah, there we were a few items. Trade however, right. yeah. however, we yeah. can have minimum, tr minimal trade mm -hmm. and everything could be local. And Western Pennsylvania, there's plenty of farmland here. Yeah. We could be growing everything we need right here, and we could have jobs for people. We could, but what we have to remember is when you eat locally, depending on where you live, there are certain foods out of season you're not going to eat out of season. Yeah, absolutely. You're not going to eat a tomato so in February in the Pittsburgh. The yeah. okay. grapes. Yeah. Like grapes. the old yeah. days yeah. when yeah. that's the way it works. Now, the way you eat a tomato in February in Pittsburgh is you have it canned in your basement yeah. because somebody canned it well, you in July. It. Or, right. or you, well, you buy it. Yeah, you buy it frozen or you put it in your freezer or whatever. So it's possible that we have to start thinking differently about how we eat. Yeah, so moving back prepared. to more personal preparation. Personal preparation. Yeah. I've got my garden, I grow my tomatoes, I make my sauce and can it. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or your neighbor does the canning exactly. right. and you give them the land to grow the tomatoes on, you know, right. like here we are. Right. Everyone may not want the garden. How about your neighbor does the garden? Exactly. Well, we've lost some of our group. Of our <laughs> they had appointments our and everything, but that's fine. Our has diminished. We're just uh, Margo Mason and Sort now. But that still works. That still works. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the firm lives on. The firm uh, lives on. <laughs> either way. All right. So um, what uh, what uh, Mancuso left, um, <laughs> her brief that she left before she left, was some information about uh, genetic modified uh, foods, GMOs, um, and that's been a real controversy about GMOs. Um, and these are these are um, there's all kinds of genetic modifications right. of foods. We've been using genetic modified foods, especially corn, for over 80 years in this country. Um, but, you know, one of the, the points she made is that we've also been sick a lot in this country. I mean, right. if you, you know, you listen to the statistics, mm -hmm. you know, 25% of people have this, 10% have this. You know, pre pretty soon, we don't need a population that doesn't have something. Mm -hmm. You know, who are the healthy people? So we need to take a look at what our food supply looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, here's some of the things that uh, currently are, currently commercialized GM crops, genetically modified crops in the U.S., 91% of soy. Mm -hmm. 91% of yeah, soy. That's crazy. Okay, that's think crazy. of how much soy is in everything. Okay, 71% uh, cotton. Now we're not eating cotton, but you know, we absorb things from the clothing we wear. Canola, 88%. Essentially, all canola oil is genetically modified. Oh, corn. It, I know. And, but, you know oh, it's saying that's it. My wife has a cafe, and I'm thinking how much canola that's oil. That's right, we canola oil. And you know, olive oil. But that's oil, how you cook. That's things. how you cook because right. olive oil is too, too, too low. You know, you can't, mm -hmm. yeah, can't, you do, uh, yeah. can't do the high heat. Uh, it doesn't bake well. Okay, corn, 85 percent. Sugar beets, which sweetens a lot of these packaged things with the uh, muskrat glands, 90 percent. <laughs> okay, I still Hawaiian, haven't found that name yet. I apologize. <laughs> Hawaiian papaya, more than 50 percent. Alfalfa. At Supreme Court. I don't know what that means. Zucchini and yellow squash, small amount, tobacco, I don't know what that is. Okay. Other sources of GMOs, dairy products from cows injected with the GM hormone RBGH. These are growth hormones for right. cows. The other thing that's a problem with cows and uh, livestock is that because they're being raised, not outside, mm -hmm. they're being raised in these huge enclosed areas and these cows don't move. They stay in one place, they just feed them constantly and then they slaughter them. They're sick all the time. Now keep in mind cows are being fed corn. Right. Already corn is jam modified. Okay, they're feeding that this is a ruminant. You know, a ruminant is an animal that has a second stomach 
They eat grass. Grass goes into the first stomach, then gets into the second stomach. They regurgitate it. They chew it. Goes back down. Right. This is a process. Rumination. Okay, not the rumination that we're familiar with, but this is what cows do. Exactly. Okay, that's how they stay healthy. That's how they make wonderful milk for baby cows. Okay, not for people, but for baby cows. They can't ruminate corn, so they're sick. Right. They have snotty noses. They have diarrhea. They're standing in all of this stuff, and so with we have to cows. with other cows. So we have to load them up with antibiotics to keep them alive. Okay, so when these cows go to market, sick cows, mm -hmm. they get slaughtered. Guess who eats that stuff? Yeah, whoever is eating non-organic, non-locally grown, non-grass-fed, grass-finished beef right. is eating all of this garbage yeah. and getting sick. That's and I, I, th I don't know that everyone really gets the, the grass-fed thing. They think, oh, well, that's some designer beef, grass-fed. Cows, cows eat, need to eat grass. grass. Cows that's, eat grass. That's what they evolved to eat. That's they what they evolved, evolved to eat. To eat. Purina well, and, and the industry got around that because what they would do is they would say, well, here's grass-fed cow. Well, they feed the cow grass for most of its life, but for the last several months of its life, mm -hmm. they go to a feedlot where they're crammed full and fattened up with corn right. and GMO-modified GMO, corn right. and sickness and all of that, and, and then they're slaughtered. So what difference did it make that the first year or so of their life they ate grass? So what you want to look for if you're concerned about this is a label that says grass-fed, grass-finished. That means this cow has eaten nothing but grass and the hay in the wintertime that it's supposed hey, to it's eat. Grass. Yeah, it's a grass, <laughs> but it's not green grass. But, you know, eating the stuff it's supposed to eat to be a healthy cow and a healthy, happy cow. So that's an important thing. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you're concerned about what you're putting into your body, you want to be concerned about what the thing you're eating put into its body. Exactly. Okay. And the thing that it ate, what's going on with that? So if a cow is grazing on grass that's got pesticides all over mm -hmm. it, that's not so good either. Right. So it's very difficult to know how to deal with this. So you are able, you know, there are more and more local farmers who are grass-fed, grass-finished mm -hmm. animals that you can buy from. Now it's going to cost more money, okay? But think about how much money you spend when you get sick and you have to exactly. pay your high prices for your uh, your medical care, if you can even get it. Um, deduct that and put that into the to the, the amount of money you're going to pay for the food. And eat yeah. less beef. Think about Excellent. think about meat as a condiment rather than as a main course. Right. Yeah, when um, Jude was talking about the, the amount of vegetables we were eating, um, you really need to look at your plate as a, a pie chart, and more than half of it should be vegetables. Actually, probably three-quarters of it. Yeah. Three-quarters, that's a lot. Yeah, it is, but but it's not that hard if you just kind of ease into it. So mm -hmm. here's the list. Look at this. Here are the foods that may contain GM ingredients i got to figure out how to do that. And you can find out by going to the non-GMO shopping guide. Uh, they have that at the App Store, actually. And go to Institute for Responsible Technology uh, on the Internet, and you will find these lists. Infant formula. Mm. That's scary. Salad dressing, bread, cereal. These are all processed foods. Hamburgers and hot dogs, margarine, mayonnaise, crackers, cookies, chocolate, candy. Along with your, all of those things are going to have that muskrat clan too. Be careful. Fried food, chips, veggie burgers, meat substitutes, ice cream, frozen yogurt, tofu, tofu, tamari and soy sauce, soy cheese, tomato sauce, protein powder, baking powder, any sugar not 100% cane, mm. which is most of it, confectioners, glaze, alcohol, vanilla, may contain corn syrup, peanut butter, enriched flour, malt, and white vinegar, and non-food items that may contain GM ingredients. Cosmetics, soaps, detergents, and shampoo. Right. It's getting us from all levels. Okay. It's kind of scary. So sometimes I can understand why people say, ah, this is ridiculous. I can't deal with this. I'm just going to forget about it's all of this. It's complicated. Do whatever stop. I, I mean, do. you're explaining I mean, the difference between the labels, yeah. the one label and the other. I mean, it's like, I, I can't I can't look for this all the time. Yeah, I mean, can't it, I just it, go it, have it a hamburger? Why can't I just have a Big Mac and pretend that none of this is real? Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. yeah. Which is what a lot of people do. I and mean, I think it's too. that's it. It's an effort thing. So... So, 10 reasons to avoid GMOs. What are they, first of all? Here's what a GMO is, since we're talking about it. GMO, genetically modified organism, is the result of a laboratory process where genes from the DNA of one species are extracted and artificially forced into the genes of an unrelated plant or animal. The foreign genes may come from bacteria, viruses, insects, animals, or even humans. Because this involves the transfer of genes, GMOs are also known as transgenic organisms. This process may be called either genetic engineering, GE, or genetic modification, GM. They're the same thing. Okay. And there's an article here that goes into the whole process of how that's done. Why do we do this? Well, it makes 
for a better profit for agribusiness. Right. Okay, because one of the things that they're figuring out to do is get pesticides into the DNA of the plant that they're growing. So that used to be you could wash off a pesticide right. from an apple or an orange or something. You don't have to worry about it. Just soak it a little bit, wash it off. Well, now, because of the genetic modification, that pesticide is part of the DNA of that plant, and it's in every cell of that plant. Exactly. So that's like taking a teaspoon and going and having a teaspoon of Roundup mm. with your applesauce. Just yep. pour it right out in there right on. because you're going to be eating that pesticide. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, I've worked out my appetite. So, um. <laughs> so here are some 10 reasons to avoid GMOs. GMOs are unhealthy. Okay. Uh, there's a there's a study that uh, the American Academy of Environmental Medicine urges doctors to prescribe non-GMO diets for all patients. They cite animal studies showing organ damage, gastrointestinal and immune system disorders. We have a huge number of autoimmune disorders in this country right now. Accelerated aging and infertility. Human studies show how genetically modified foods can leave material behind inside us causing long-term problems. Okay, GMA, uh, the soy thing we were talking about before, can transfer into DNA of bacteria living inside us and that the toxic insecticides produced by GMA, GM corn was found in the blood of pregnant women and their unborn fetuses. Yes. So lots of health issues concerned with this. GMOs contaminate forever. GMO cross-pollinate and their seeds can travel. So we can't say that an organic farm that's that's two miles away from an agribusiness farm that's that's farming with GMO products we can't say that that organic farm is not going to get exactly, infiltrated by the these GMO seeds. By the, by exactly. The and, by bees. and by insects and other kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So that's a danger. Potential impact is huge. Okay. It says self propagating GMO pollution will outlast the effects of global warming and nuclear waste. That's pretty extensive. Three, GMOs increase herbicide use. Okay. Most GMO crops are engineered to be herbicide tolerant the deadly weed killer. Monsanto, for example, sells Roundup Ready crops mm -hmm. designed to survive applications of their Roundup herbicide. Okay. Between 1996 and 2008, U.S. farmers sprayed an extra 383 million pounds of herbicide on GMOs. Overuse of Roundup results in super weeds resistant to the herbicide. This is causing farmers to use even more toxic herbicides every year. So we're creating the problem that we're trying to solve. Not only does this create environmental harm, GMA foods contain higher residues of toxic herbicides. Roundup, for example, is linked with sterility. And we know that there is a problem with infertility worldwide. Um, and there's a difficulty with, particularly with um, the uh, motility and the survivability of male sperm. Hormone disruption, birth defects, and cancer. Number four, genetic engineering creates dangerous side effects. Okay, so we don't know what we're going to get when we add some of these things to the DNA. Right. We're possibly creating a Frankensteinian situation with some of these situations. Five, government oversight is dangerously lax. That shouldn't surprise anybody. Okay, we have had an assault on the Environmental Protection Agency since 2008, and that hasn't gotten any better, unfortunately, in the current administration. Six, the biotech industry uses tobacco science to claim product safety. What does that mean? Biotech companies like Monsanto told us that Agent Orange, PCBs, and DDT were safe. They are now using the same type of superficial rigged research to try and convince us that GMOs are safe. Independent scientists, however, have caught the spin masters red-handed, demonstrating without doubt how industry-funded research is designed to avoid finding problems, and now adverse findings are distorted and denied. Number seven. Independent research and reporting is attacked and suppressed. The journal Nature acknowledged that a large block of scientists denigrate research by other legitimate science scientists in a knee-jerk, partisan, emotional way that is not helpful in advancing knowledge. Part of the problem with this is that a lot of science is funded mm -hmm. by these large agribusiness and other groups, and of course, they're not going to be funding research that turns out to say that their product is harmful. So there's a lot of pressure on scientists to get with the program and right. demonstrate the efficacy that the company wants. Eight, GMOs harm the environment. Herbicides, these associated herbicides from these crops can harm birds, insects, amphibians, marine ecosystems, and soil organisms. They reduce biodiversity. And this is probably the biggest threat. Um, when we reduce biodiversity, you know, think about it. You, you, you can go across country and you see miles and miles and miles of American farmland. It's all corn. Mm -hmm. It's a monoculture, mm -hmm. all corn. We don't learn anything from the potato famine. Right. Okay. What happens when we have a monoculture and something happens to that? Right. We have nothing. And so we need biodiversity. 
GM crops are eliminating habitat for monarch butterflies, whose population are now down 50% in the U.S. Roundup herbicide has been shown to cause birth defects in amphibians, embryonic deaths, and endocrine disruptions, and or organ damage in animals at even very low doses. It makes some sense. It's supposed to kill things. Right. That's why it's and an it herbicide. Does. It does. It kills <laughs> quite effectively. GM canola has been found growing wild in North Dakota and California, threatening to pass on its herbicide tolerant genes onto weeds. Mm -hmm. okay. And we're already having an enormous problem controlling invasive species that have come from other countries and weeds that have become resistant to herbicides. Nine, GMOs do not increase yields and work against feeding a hungry world. Whereas sustainable non-GMO agricultural methods used in developing countries have conclusively yielded, resulted in yield increases of 79% or higher, GMOs do not on average increase yields at all. This was evident in the Union of Concerned Scientists 19, uh, 2009 report of failure to yield the definitive study to date on GM crops and yields. So go to this, the website of the Union of Concer Concerned Scientists and you'll find that study. Uh, and the International Assessment of Agricultural Knowledge, Science, and Technology for Development Report, authored by more than 400 scientists and backed by 58 governments, stated that GM crop yields were highly variable. In some cases, yields declined. So this is a, a major problem. Of course, we're being told this is wonderful and we need to have this. Mm -hmm. Right. So right. people and need to, it, to get it. Yeah. Wrong there's something you don't, you wrong just don't understand. Yeah, you're just probably a socialist or something. <laughs> Number <laughs> ten. You know, the, the big bugaboo now is socialist. By avoiding GMOs, you contribute to the coming tipping point of consumer rejection, forcing them out of our food supply. Because GMOs give no consumer benefits, if even a small percentage of us start rejecting brands that contain them, GM ingredients will become a marketing liability. Food companies will kick them out. In Europe, for example, the tipping point was achieved in 99, just after a high-profile GMO safety scandal hit the papers and alerted citizens of the potential dangers. See what happens when we know what's going on. We don't let it keep happening. In the U.S., a consumer rebellion against GM bovine growth hormone has also reached a tipping point Kick the cow drug out of dairy products by Walmart, Starbucks, Dan and Yoplait, and most of America's dairy. So we have the ability as a population to educate ourselves and say no to things that are harmful to us. Absolutely. We just have to, we just have to get ourselves educated. Okay. So check out the campaign for healthier eating in America. Uh, it's designed to achieve that tipping point against GMOs in the U.S. Educate yourself about this. Go to the Institute for Responsible Technology, and learn something about GMOs so that you can make some good food choices. All right. Well, on that point, uh, we're reaching the end of our time. Reaching the end so. of our time. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I don't know, hopefully everybody got a little bit of education out of this. Um, really and let us know what you think. How are you trying to uh, eat healthy and uh, avoid GMOs and the like and the problems out there, uh, drop us a line, mike at uh, seclair.com. Please let us know. And of course, uh, you know, we're on iTunes, we're on Mediafly, YouTube, and you can get all the episodes at seclair.com slash blog. So uh, thanks to you, Julia, and our associates that have already left. Have taken <laughs> off and let us say be healthy and bon appetit. There you go. Yay.